Hello all, welcome back to another video. For this topic, I'm going to be explaining the printf method. This is an optional method to control, format, and display text to the console window. Here's an example of the printf method, and this is different from print and print line. With the printf method, there are two arguments we need to place within the parentheses of the printf method. The first is a format string, a string that you would like to display to the console window. And second, we can add either an object, a variable, or a value. To keep it simple for now, I just added a value of 1, 2, 3. So we can format some value and place it at some position within the string. The position in which we want to add this value, whatever it is, can be added to wherever we add a format specifier, which is represented by a percent sign. Let's say we would like to add this value at the end of our format string. So we would add a format specifier at the end that is represented by the percent sign. And there is a certain amount and number of combinations and characters that we can add after this format specifier. And this will format our value a certain way. If we simply need to display a decimal number, we're going to add a D. It's kind of like a secret code. That's how I think of it at least. So if we add a percent sign and D, we will add this decimal value at this position within our format string, and that will appear down here. I could place this format specifier someplace else, and this value would be added to wherever I put this format specifier. So if I added this format specifier to the beginning of my format string, then this value will appear at the beginning of my string. So with the printf method, you need a format string and either an object, a variable, or a value. Depending on where you place this format specifier, the percent sign, your value or variable will appear at this location. Think of it as you're replacing the format specifier with this value. And depending on the combination of flags, numbers, and characters after this format specifier, this is going to format and display your value a certain way, depending on what combination of letters and characters comes after. Let's begin with conversion characters. This is a letter that appears after the format specifier, and the conversion character corresponds with the data type of the value that we're attempting to add. So D corresponds with decimal numbers, so we could add an integer at this location. So let's go over a few of the conversion characters that are available to us, but we'll need to create a few variables to do so. So let's begin with a Boolean. Boolean, let's call this my Boolean, and I will set this to true. We'll need a character, so let's say char my char equals, and then pick a symbol that you want to use. We'll need a string, string my string equals maybe your name. We'll need an integer, int my int, and assign it a number. I'm just going to pick one at random, let's say 50. And let's add a double value. So double my double equals maybe 1,000. So for characters, that is actually percent C. And let's display my character. Okay, so strings are percent S. So let's copy this, paste it. That is percent %s, and this will display a string. Should probably get rid of that line too. Okay, and integers are d for decimal, but we've covered that already. So percent %d for a integer. Let's display my int, which displays 50, and percent f for a double value. So that's for floating point numbers and double values. So let's display my double. So remember, with conversion characters, these are certain letters that follow the format specifier, the percent sign, and in order to display a certain object, variable, or value, you need a matching conversion character to follow after the format specifier. B for booleans, C for characters, S for strings, D for integers, and F for floats or doubles. 
our next field is the width field, so I already created some notes on this. The width field sets the minimum number of characters to be written as output. So here's an example. We have a format string, and we would like to display a value that is of the string data type. So let's say at the end, we're going to add percent %s to display the string. We can set a minimum number of characters to display. So let's say we want to display at least 10 characters for this string. So before the conversion character, we can set a width, and this is a number. So if we want 10 spaces worth of room to display the string, we would add 10 or some other number before the conversion character. So before we display this, I'm just going to turn these lines into comments, and we will display hello plus my string, which states bro. So this prints a minimum of 10 characters for the name, including the length of the name. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus the space that was here already too. So you can set a width, and this will display a minimum number of characters to be written out. And if you set this to be a negative number, that's actually a flag that we'll get into in just a little bit. That'll actually left justify the text within the space that we're allocating to display this value. So this text is now left justified, but all of that empty space now comes after my text, my string. Next on our list is the precision field, and what this will do is set a number of digits of precision when outputting floating point values. These include the data types of floats or doubles. Here's an example. I have a format string that states you have this much money and then we have a format specifier that will display my double. This is the default, so we need at least percent %f and this will display 1000 as well as six zeros after our decimal. We can limit the amount of digits that will display after this decimal by using the precision field. So we write this before the conversion character. Let's say we would like to limit the amount of digits that we have after this decimal to two to represent cents. So I'm going to add 0.2 for two digits. And this will limit the amount of digits that will appear after the decimal portion. And if we change this to a different number like one, well then this will only display one. So that is the precision field. It will set a number of digits of precision when outputting floating point values. And lastly, we have flags. These will add an effect to output based on the flag added to the format specifier. Here's a few. We can left justify. We can output a plus or minus sign for a numeric value. We can have numeric values be padded with zeros. And we can separate large numbers by the thousands by using a comma. Let's try a few of these out. Let's copy what we have for our example for precision. So I'm going to copy this line. And let's get rid of the precision. So we have percent %f. Let's left justify this. So I'm going to set a width, maybe 20, and set this to negative. So this will left justify all of that. Although it's a little difficult to see, I'm going to get rid of the left justify, and this will now be right justified. So this would be useful if you need to line up a bunch of numbers. We can output a plus or minus sign for a numeric value. So I'm going to add plus f and this should be plus 1000 if this was a negative number like negative 1000 this should appear as a minus now we can also pad our number with zeros so let's set a width of maybe 20 and we will right justify it so we do not need a negative sign and we are going to add zero so we now have a bunch of zeros before our number of 1,000. And lastly, we can separate each thousands place with a comma simply by adding a comma as the flag. So percent comma F. So at the 1,000s place, we now have a comma. So that is all what the printf method is. It's an optional method to control, format, and display text to the console window. We need at least two arguments, a format string, as well as either an object, a variable, or a value. We can add a format specifier within this format string, 
and add a combination of characters and numbers to format our variable value or object a certain way. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the 11th part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.